Johnny Holly's eldest girl's just gone past on her way to school. She rides that bike as though she can't wait to get there. Oh, yes. It's lovely to see a girl like that getting a chance. One egg or two. Oh, two, please, love. Hey. Well, let's hope it lasts for it. It can fall hard on the eldest lass in a family that size. I thought I might pop over to Kingsport later on. Think you can manage? What do you think I did all those years when you're off on your travels with the Colonel? Ah, you were a good one. I don't suppose there'll be much of a rush anyway. No. By God, he must have been slack, though, that last fella, to let this place run down so far. Wait till next spring and summer. We'll show them what a pub should be like. Winners. Six out of ten. It's neat, careful work, but you don't seem able to use your own mind much, do you, Winners? Lydia Holly. <laughs> Lydia, when I look at your exercise book, I groan in spirit. I can't think what you do with it. Look at that. Did you eat fish and chips all over it? No, that was our Alice, Miss. She had some chips. Just chips, chips, you say? Well, there's a distinctly fishy odour. <laughs> but it's all right, but you lot are you just I'm speaking to you. Never mind the others. Be quiet, all of you. Apart from anything else, Lydia, your book is a disgrace. 26 spelling mistakes, no punctuation, or at least none worth mentioning, five blots and 17 crossings out. I can't possibly accept such work. Of course, it's refused. At the same time, it's much the most interesting piece of work I've received from this form this term. Indeed, it's one of the most interesting school essays I've ever read. So that when you've overcome the terrible appearance of the work, it really is a joy to read. Now, although it's refused as an exercise because we simply can't do with such slovenly, dirty work, when you've copied it out without a single blot or spelling mistake, I shall send it up to the headmistress as a possible entry for the essay prize. Do you understand? Oh, yes, miss. Thank you, miss. Miss Masters, not plain miss. And for goodness sake, during break, ask Miss Parsons for some wool and mend that stocking. How can I think about a midsummer night's dream when every time I look up I see that terrible potato? <laughs> <laughs> This way, Councillor Huggins. You see what I mean? Excuse me, please, a moment, Council Huggins. Yeah, of course. Now, Lydia, you really must be more careful and don't take advantage of your quick tongue. You know you don't mean to be unkind. But Midge does not have the advantage of the rough and tumble of a big family. She'll have to learn that you might let her down lightly. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Burton, I'm sorry. 
All right. Oh, and for goodness sake, tidy yourself up. It is not clever to be untidy. It's just undisciplined. And if you're going to go in for that university scholarship, you're going to need every ounce of discipline that you can muster. I didn't really mean you were pinching things. I should hope not. The eldest daughter in a family of how many? Seven, I believe. She's rough, undisciplined, untidy. You saw for yourself. But a delight. So imaginative, bright and quick. I've got great hopes for that girl. Oh, please sit down. Uh, the uh, the other girl seemed an highly strong little thing. Oh, yes. She's the daughter of Robert Kahn of Maythorpe. Oh, yes. Uh, a governor of the school. And a colleague of yours on the council, I believe. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I'm very grateful that you've taken time out of your working day, Councillor, to call. It was Alderman Astle who suggested I might invite you. Splendid man. Oh, yes. You see, I've spoken to all the governors, well, nearly all, and when I asked Alderman Astle who on the Higher Education Committee might be sympathetic to my problems, mm -hmm. he very kindly suggested yourself. I think you've seen enough of our cloakrooms, and the list of improvements needed for the school is endless, but that dungeon is the bane of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you're a very busy man, and of course you've got a lot of things to think about. But... There's always time for the things that matter, Miss Burke. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Goodness, what a single-minded bore I must have seemed to some of the people I've spoken to. But what is one to do when something is so important and nobody seems to understand? Ah, well, you mustn't judge us all alike, Miss Burton, because there are plans afoot even now, big plans that I'm not at liberty to talk about, but they'll affect us all if we have patience and trust in the Lord to provide. But don't you think, Councillor, the Lord might provide more quickly with a little persuasive petitioning? 